Richard Haydarian, a senior lecturer in international affairs at the University of the Philippines, also in the process of writing a book about the Marcos family's rule in the Philippines, joins me live now from Manila. Great to get you on the program, Richard. So we heard comments about climate change, food security, and also that the Philippines is on its way to become a moderately prosperous country by 2040, all of that from the new president. What do you think this trip is about for him in terms of the message he's trying to take to the international community? Well, this is definitely about the Marcus's uh, diplomatic debut. I mean, their return to the international stage. It was very much about Marcus Jr. projecting uh, statesmanship, in fact, global leadership. If you look at his speech, he practically talks about everything uh, that the international community is worried about, whereas climate change, effects of rapid techn technological disruption, uh, international security and peace, and Philippines' contribution along those lines. He hardly talks about, in fact, he doesn't talk about any controversial issues, including controversial issues that are, of course, uh, attached to his family. They're, you know, the human rights record of the Marcuses, the uh, accusations of corruption, uh, all of those things. None of them are mentioned as far as his speech is concerned. And this is important because today actually marks the 50th year uh, anniversary of the martial law, declaration of martial law and establishment of dictatorship by his father. And a lot of the victims of that, those dark days are actually still alive and with us today. So Richard, as you point out, he's obviously trying to separate himself from the rule of his father, but at the same time, he's trying to uh, find some um, accommodation in the West, if you will. Do you think he will get that kind of response that he's looking for? Well, after six years of President Rodrigo Duterte, who lambasted the West, who cussed American leaders, who actually refused to visit the United States or any Western capital for six years, I think there's actually a sigh of relief uh, in Washington and in a lot of Western capital that we have finally a leader again in the Philippines who's willing to visit the West, who's actually wooing the West. Uh, Marcus Jr. the other day, uh, uh, you know, was in charge of the closing, uh, ringing the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange. He has been wooing investors in the West, he has been trying uh, to set up perhaps a meeting to the White House sometime next year. So yes, Marcuses have their baggage, but after six years of Duterte presidency, in fact, he's being welcomed as a, a breath of fresh air for that matter, as, uh, as ironic as that sounds. Yes, I was just going to say that. I think irony is absolutely the right word there, Richard. Briefly, before we let you go, how important is the role of the Philippines when it comes to U.S.-China relations? Oh, it's absolutely important. The Philippines is at the very front line of the competition between these two superpowers. And let's not forget, not only is the element of South China important when it comes to the Philippines, because the Philippines is a major claimant state in the South China Sea, where U.S. and China are competing for influence and access, but also Taiwan. The Philippines is separated by Taiwan by a very ni narrow strait. So should a major conflict happen in Taiwan, the Philippines will very much be at the front line. So in many ways, the Philippines is the front line state in the Indo-Pacific as far as U.S.-China new Cold War is concerned. That, and Marcus Jr. knows that very well and is leveraging that. Richard Haydarian, Senior Lecturer in International Affairs at the University of the Philippines, thanks so much for joining us on the program. Pleasure.